In this FAI F2D Triple Elimination Contest, you advance from round to round until you've lost three matches. The sole pilot left at the end is the champion. If you've never heard of F2D before, don't miss our introductory video where the details of a match are explained. On Saturday, people started arriving around 8 a.m. and most were there by 9. Dave came with the most amazing trailer outfitted with a workbench storage and electricity. Registration got underway and we got 12 pilots. Before the combat started, our host and center marshal Brad Lapointe held a pilots meeting to discuss safety and logistics. Yaro of Yaroslav Melnikov Systems sponsored three fun prizes, one for the youngest participant, the pilot who makes the most cuts in total, and the worst pilot ever. In this highlights video, we'll see the best parts of each match and experience the excitement that unfolds from round to round. As the planes were readied in the pit area, it was time to draw matches for round one. You got Dimitri and Ivan and everybody. Yeah, everybody's in here, including Dimitri, even though he's not here yet. Let's do... We got Yaro and Walter. Each pilot is matched randomly with an opponent for the round, and new matches are drawn at the beginning of each subsequent round. Carrie and Dave were matched in round one, but they had traveled over a thousand kilometers to get to the contest and expected to pit for each other. Since it's early rounds, and as a courtesy, Walter and Dave were swapped to accommodate the situation. These are the first round matches. Let's get started. Yeah, they're both matches can get physical where both planes and pilots collide. We were short counters and timers, so pilots not flying volunteered to help Nancy. There's Brad watching the pilots for rule infractions. Counters look really hard for those 50-point cuts. When a plane goes down, the pit crew has to transfer the streamer and launch the alternate plane as fast as possible to score airtime one point per second. Too bad Dave's alternate engine quit. A blue streamer in a cloudless sky is very hard to see. Even if there's no streamer left, you still have to transfer the tethering string to your alternate plane. Look at Max run! The circle marshal times the overall match, a maximum of four minutes. <laughs> and so starts Walter's unlucky day. Poor Walter is confused when Vadim crashes onto an old streamer. I got confused because I saw I saw the streamer right there. I'm like, is that your plane? <laughs> you know what I mean? I came out here, I got confused because I see the streamer right there. I, go, I know you had no streamer. The lines are tangled and poor Walter doesn't realize his plane is behind him. I threw the other guy's plane for like half 30 seconds. Yeah. And it was mine. Yeah.
Austin is really going for it. Ed has the first flyaway of the contest. The plane landed in the creek, but Ivan got it back. Why did it refly, honey? Because his lines were up the, the other guy's lines and couldn't get him out. Looks like Ed had trouble getting started. There he goes. It's one to one, and you got air time. I got it. Predictably, at the end of round one, we have six pilots that won and six that lost. Fuel for the event is provided by the contest organizers. Poor Walter got the dim disqualified by entering the circle too soon. When the line tangle is really bad, you get out the wire cutters. Pilots must wait for the circle marshal to yell combat before attacking. It's hard to see, but red takes blue by the wing. Pat can't score and Austin is ahead, so Austin gets an early stop to the match. Poor Walter's cut is too small to be seen from the ground. It's not really a cut if the cut counters can't see it. Poor Walter is involved in another mix-up. Walter got 20 points for stepping out. He's a lot faster than Matt. I said spread out, so they both started flying combat before I said combat. So I didn't DQ either one of them, I just told them, next time wait till I say start combat. 
Another six wins and another six losses. Bob, Vadim, and Walter all face elimination in round three. The pressurized fuel bladder is just a bit of silicone tubing fitted into the wing. Brad was a bit premature there. Poor Walter's streamer blew into his own propeller when pitting. You have to clear the line tangle before you pit the plane. Austin and Yarrow are tied for first place and we have some eliminations. Bob, the Dim, and Walter are all gone with three strikes, but they still get to participate in pitting, timing, and counting. Dimitri and Ed face elimination in round four. With an odd number of pilots left, Yara will fly twice in round 5 with his first round 5 match counting as his round 4 result. To get to the bean field, Austin and Carrie flew together from Kansas City to Detroit. Dave drove from Minneapolis and picked them up on the way. Yeah. 
Austin loses airtime with an engine that dies just before launch. Alternate airplane to the rescue. Austin's having trouble with a stuck streamer clip. <laughs> round 4 results are delayed until after the first round 5 match. Notice the first match counts as round 4 for Yarrow and round 5 for Max. Round 4 sees Yarrow alone in first place and Dimitri and Ed have been eliminated. Max faces elimination in round 5 and we just saw him lose his round 5 match. Rounds progress, a pilot has to fly against each remaining pilot before flying anyone twice. Dave is finally matched against Carrie, who was a little late starting. We could see the wind picking up and the sky getting darker. When the thunderstorm hit, the pilots scrambled to get their gear under cover. When it was over, we had a spectacular rainbow. <laughs> the day was getting late and no one wanted to get their stuff out again, so Brad and Nancy put on their famous barbecue. Yeah, probably oh, yeah. Here's something unusual. Pat Streamer was unhooked from his plane in flight, not cut. They changed that rule, right? Yeah. It's no longer a DQ. It's now a 100-point penalty. So that doesn't, that doesn't even count as a cut for him. It's a 100-point penalty for me. But I, I, should have had, I should have had to relaunch. Yeah. So, so it is a refly then. Yeah, it, it, should be a refly. it should be a refly.
At the end of round 5, Dave and Yaro are tied for first place and Max has been eliminated. I've got to change them all. Carrie, Ivan and Pat all face elimination in this round. And since Pat and Carrie are matched, one of them has to go. Yikes! Yarl's plane flies away and lands in the tall grass. Did they try to go get it? Yeah, they're up there. But they're up there, yeah. Two losses each, both face elimination in this match. Both still facing elimination. So it's Carrie that advances and off to the pit for Pat. Spooky the dog made an appearance and no, she didn't chew the planes. That's actual combat damage. In round 7 we have an odd number of pilots again. This time Dave waits for a round 8 opponent. We are now in a kill-kill situation where the only way to win is by time and you must win by more than 5 seconds. Yarrow's up. And Austin's up. Did Yarrow land on purpose? Well, I thought he did. Max, Max says no. No, the angel quit. The officials rule a tie, but Ivan is certain there is a timing error in his favor, so he concedes defeat. Let's look at that again. After the crash, Ivan goes straight into the ground, but look at the long glide that Carrie gets. Eight seconds around half the circle. Carrie launches about 2 seconds before Ivan for a total advantage of 10 seconds. Ivan knew he lost and he did the right thing. Classy guy. 
Remember, Dave still hasn't flown in round 7. He needs a round 8 competitor. Dave's round 7 match will be against Carrie in round 8. Round 7 ends with Ivan and Austin being eliminated with the same win record. Rather than having a fly-off, they agree to toss a coin for 4th place and the toss goes to Ivan. If we include Carrie's round 8 loss to Dave, we see that Carrie finishes in 3rd place for the contest. Dave and Yarrow are tied for 1st place with 1 loss each. In triple elimination, this means the rest of the contest is a best of 3 series between them. To move things along and reduce the airplane carnage, they decide instead on a single match final. They both got two lives left, but they're going to fly it. Winner takes all. One was been really kind of hot today. First place goes to Yarrow and second place to Dave. Carrie Miner, all the way from Kansas City. Congratulations and thank you for coming. From Minnesota, north of the Twin Cities, Dave! <laughs> much for coming you did a great job with the most cuts made through the contest with the number 14 Dave Fisher all right <laughs> okay, one cut I made 13 and Carrie made 12 yeah yeah for yeah. <laughs> the pilots that uh, messed up messed, messed up, up <laughs> screwed up the matches whatever so uh Sorry, Walter, I can't snap your name. That's for you, man. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta win something somehow. It's all just a bit of fun, really. Walter is actually a good combat pilot. He just had an unlucky weekend. In fact, he came in second in F2D at the 2016 Toronto and District Championships and first in speed limit combat. Here are the 2017 Triple X Contest Champions. This contest is the third in a series to determine the winner of this year's Can-Am Cup. So far, Pat is in the lead. Since the bean field is in Canada, the contest is also part of the Canada Team Trial Series to see what Canadians go to the World Championships next year. Our hosts wish to extend their thanks to all the pilots who traveled long distances to participate, to the people who assisted in timing and counting cuts, and for making this documentary video of the event. And of course, let me thank our hosts in turn for organizing this event and for their gracious donation of the bean field without which none of us could participate. We hope to see you again next year when crop rotation should bring beans back to the bean field. I'm Doug Blackmore. Thanks for watching.